When I started here in 1958, when he came in at the front entrance, there was a cottage there and a garden. There was nothing, just this main mill at the side. We invented pre-stressed wire, the strand. It was invented at Manchester and they brought it down here and, and built the PSC or the CO2, the welding wire. Yeah. We invented that as well. And then we stopped. But we buy it now from Europe. But as I say, we invented it here. I mean, I've always said, if they hadn't shut us down, I'd probably still be working here now, you know? Yeah, no, no, no. Beautiful Sorry. place to work. Nothing, nothing better than working here in, in the summer. Dad used to say that the, the best chips were the chips here because they used to freeze blocks of smash, uh, powdered potato, and then drop it through a chipper, then straight into the fat and they said they were delicious. <laughs> Johnson and Nephew chips were the best. <laughs> the day I started here, and he's taking me round the works, and he said, I'll give you one bit of advice. If you're ever calling anybody on this works, he said, make sure you know who they are, because there's so many people related here. He said, you're likely to get it's back in the mouth if you call him something. He was related to brother, Les. Oh, Les. Oh, Les and, and, and then there were John and Steve. John, John, have you? Yeah. It went round on a machine and put, I think it was 100 tons in each of the indentations on the cellar field. I went up a time or two to wind it round. That, that would be around the reactor containment. Yes, the, it? yes, the, in, the, in the power station. CNS. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're a regular up there. Yeah, because there was a big, huge cylinder yeah. that came down, concrete. Every so often there was wide gaps and a machine went round it and wound the strand yeah. round. Then it joined it. I think it put seven rows on in each hole as it went down. Tell you where else they did. New bridge at Bristol, the Seven Bridge. They did all the stay wires on it. Yeah. We used to ship coils of strand up to Whitby. And it used to go across on a boat from Whitby to Norway. A big suspension bridge of some sort in Norway. And they, they kept having our coils of strand collapse. And I, I can remember going up to Whitby one morning and I just had to go up there. Yeah. Make sure that they weren't collapsed coils. It was about Eight inches of snow up there when I got there. Freezing cold, because it was like January, February time. One evening, it was dark outside, but it was also very dark in the factory. It was only small. So when you go into a place like that, it's quite an awesome sight. It's dark, it smells funny. It's not a particularly pleasant place to be. And thinking, Dad, would be in a nice sort of office. It wasn't particularly, but he put me in his big spinny chair while he was checking a few things. And it just appeared to be like a dangerous place, you know, vats of acid. I don't know, it looks like molten when you're little where they would have dipped the wire. But his clothes always seemed to have burn marks in. And he always had a yellow mark on the white part of his eye. He was here and a Something had flicked in his eye, I think it would have been acid or, or something. But I believe they had a doctor permanently on site who quickly sorted Dad out so he didn't lose his sight because of that. So, I mean, they used to clean the wire with, uh, I think it was cyanide. When that wire went in, my God, it would have taken it away and all the waste that came out of there. Just here, back, back here. Yeah. As kids though, after it had died down a bit, we used to come and play on it, looking for ball bearings and things like that for our catapults. If you're tangled, we're just walking to clean this at about 10 past six, that used to clear your hand. Mm. When I was foreman, I used to walk through the cleaning shed, but as soon as I walked in, I hold my breath until I got to the other end. So we're breathing in the sulfuric acid oh, terrible, and on all the acids that they cleaned them. It was neat. And they used to top the 
open drums up and then drop the rods in on the overhead crane, drop them in and bring them out. It used to be worse in winter when it was a cold, yeah. cloudy cloud yeah. morning because everything in there just used to come down to your level. When it was warm it used to go up in the air but in winter, oh it used to be awful. It was the same with my drawing department. You could see all the dust at the top of the roof when the sun was shining, all those little sparkles and everything. And it was the material coming off the dyes and into the salt and then up in the air. But we never bothered, you see. They never, they never knew any health yeah, details <laughs> as regards that. I remember one or two people, one or two people was in charge saying, it's not from safety, it's the worst thing they've ever brought out. <laughs> first started there, there was four furnaces and the old lads that's been in there a while, they always used to cook the breakfast on the side of yeah, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bacon egg and, and, and tomatoes yeah. and, and put it on the side of the bag. And, and it was covered in things. And anyway, I always took sandwiches and sat in the cabin and they'd bring the breakfast in red hot and they'd eat it. They used to order two crates of milk from Millman and used to have to drink a pint of milk all the time because the rain and got rid of lead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep lead down. But uh, <laughs> they, they didn't <laughs> test them until 1960. And they did a, a blood test blood then. Test, yeah. But they had to clear all of the Phaeton shop out because it all got lead poisoning. They used to shout to blows, Doctor, you've got to go and see Doctor, have lead test. They used to walk up, they were back in two minutes. And I used to say to them, have you had it done? Yeah, he said, just used to take a bit out of here and you say, you'll be all right, chaps, you'll be all right. My dad used to work at the Y Works and um, he didn't tell me much about what he did there. But I do know that at lunchtime, he and I think some of his friends used to like to sit on the riverbank and look out for kingfishers, uh, which was supposed to be quite a nice thing to do, just to get out of the factory for a little bit and uh, relax. Saturday night. So you had to get there early. Yes, when you got entertainment yeah. done, it was really, really good. It was the old farmer, I swear to you. Yeah. They went and we we started it. We converted it into the clubhouse. Yeah. Had some really right happy hours there. Eh? Some really happy hours. Because my daughter was young then, and she spent a lot of time down there with the flights. It was really, yeah. really good. Every week it was a highlight um, because there wasn't anything else for young people really and uh, it used to attract people from all the, the neighbouring villages as well, uh, a bit of rivalry you know. <laughs> and um, my husband used to come down and I'd probably met him without knowing, <laughs> um, you know, and then years later I got married to him. <laughs> Concerts, parties. Wedding receptions. My wife used to work in the um, export office. My granddad, he was there, my father and all, all brothers. And my dad was one of the managers down there, so everybody knew me. I played cricket at 15 for them. But I've worked in the fitting shop where the distillery is now. That was my, was my job as a fitter. I'd say I was a young lad, I was 21 when I first started there. And then I worked right up to 85 and then I got made redundant. I believe in the First World War, the Germans tried to bomb the wire works and I remember being taken and shown the bomb craters in the wood, just at the rear of the works, going upstream from uh, towards the Bear Pond and Alders Lee. And we were, as children, we used to look for shrapnel embedded in the trees in the, in the wood. I remember going to look at these holes, it must have been about six quite large holes, they'll still be there. I was working nights and uh, about three, four o'clock, the water started coming through the manhole covers where the 
water ran off the wire drawing machines from cooling the dyes and it just started to burble and guggle up and the, the floor was covered in about 20 minutes and so we shut the machines off and uh, we decided to, to go, leave. I walked up the wood down over Abney Bridge and then just looked up the road towards the Hurt Arms and the bollard in the middle of the road was, I could only see about two or three inches above the surface of the water. Well, that was it for a, a, a couple of nights. It even went into the warehouse. It was just a, an absolute mess. But uh, that's the only time I can remember the wire works flooded. 1965. When we lived here, oh, the wagons was coming from Manchester mm -hmm. every day, bringing the, the wires to be drawn here into yeah. fine wire. So they like, made the cable for the Atlantic crossing. Yeah, that was done here. Yeah. In the early 70s, they were doing 200 tonne a week, CO2. They were to draw it in mill and then wind it on onto small rails. Well, nobody else made that? No, no. It's Strand, that was the key, Strand. And they put a new system in at Ambergate to produce it. And uh, everybody used to, used to buy it. And then when it was shut down, it all went abroad. When they transferred us all the machinery up to like eating and don't cast it. They, they, they did no interest. They didn't, they didn't want it, did they? No, but well, there was one of the big new machines that we had in the BSC department, and it never ever was installed no. there. And it got put in the yard in Clack Eaton, and it eventually went for scrap. Ooh, scrapping things like that, terrible, isn't it? We could have kept this place going. We could have produced everything. Mm. I think in that particular time, though, when they were shifting all the stuff from down here up to there, in Yorkshire, right, they were getting grants. They were getting grants of a castle, you know, to bring work into the county. Well, we weren't getting it in Derbyshire and anything like that. It's, uh, well, it's distant memories now, but, but uh, everybody else has gone, like the old social club's gone. I was really disappointed in that. That was the focal point for the old village, especially with the carnivals and uh, the own bonfires and uh, Christmas celebrations and everything else up there. It took the art out of the village, that did. It was like a little community in them days. And uh, all the teams folded. Just got on with life, that was it. And still going. <laughs>